Section 3 in Chapter 2 deals with solving multi-step equations. These are going to involve more than just adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You're probably going to have to distribute and or combine some like terms. Good luck. For Section 3 in Chapter 2, I'm now solving multi-step equations. And I run the risk a little bit in these videos of giving you information you probably don't need. So as always, you watch the videos that you need and skip the ones that you don't. I'll remind you that if you're following me on YouTube, oh, looks like I've been outside and it's blurring my image. Follow me on SV Math Teach. You can like and comment on the videos there or send me emails at david.lloyd at svpanthers.org. Now here we go. Multi-step equations normally involve three or more steps. Um, they can be a variety of different things, but a reminder in most cases is that we're going to multiply before we add and subtract, or we might multiply and divide before we add and subtract. In this case, I have 26 is 6 times the quantity 5 minus 4f, and I know that distributing is going to simplify the right-hand side, so I'm going to distribute the 6 to the 5 and get 30, the 6 to the negative 4 and get negative 24f. I know I'm saying negative instead of minus. It works the same way. And now I'm going to solve this just like I did in the previous video. I'm going to do minus 30 to both sides. I'm going to have negative 4 is, here we go again, negative 24f. And I'm going to divide both sides by negative 24. And I'm going to get a fraction on this one. Don't be scared. It's positive 1 sixth is the letter F. And once again, if we needed to check that, we could surely do so. For the sake of time here, I'm going to run the risk that I haven't made any mistakes. On the second type of question, I see distributing again, but I also have something with adding invo involved. And again, here comes the multi-step piece. I'm going to distribute first because multiplication comes before adding. So I have to distribute first. So n plus 5 n's minus 5 is 7. Now I'm going to combine like terms. Um, on the left-hand side, n, which is just like 1n. n and 5n make 6n's. Minus 5 is 7. And you can probably see how we're going to do it from here. I'll finish it out just for the sake of the completeness of the question. And we get n is 2. Now, I'd mentioned this two videos ago, I believe, that there was a time when we'd want to clear out fractions. And I'm going to show you how to do that here today again. And I'm going to show you how to deal with clearing out decimals. And because these are a little different and unique, and I like them, I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to go to the fraction one first, one in the bottom right-hand corner. And what I'm going to do right off the bat is instead of combining like terms, which some teachers might encourage you to do, and there's nothing wrong with that, I have to admit, when I see fractions in a problem, I immediately cringe a little bit, and I would like to get rid of those fractions. So I'm going to deal with the fractions right off the bat, and then I'll deal with combining like terms and all of that good stuff from there. I notice that 3 and 4, my denominators, have a common denominator of 12. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 12. This will clear out my fractions. Now it will create a fairly extensive distributive property problem, but I'm not scared of that. Because 3 goes into 12 four times, and 4 twos makes 8, and then the rest of it becomes easy. 12n and 6 twelves is 72. On the other side, if you didn't follow that fraction thing, here it comes again. I'll do it a little slower. 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. Now, I haven't really changed the problem in any manner. I've just made it look different. But these are equivalent equations. So here's now the time when I'm going to combine like terms. But instead of adding 2 thirds and 6 and getting a mixed number, I'm just going to add 8 and 72. And that makes it very easy to work with 80 plus 12n equals 9. And I can solve it pretty easily from there. Minus 80 to both sides. 12n equals negative 71. Divide both sides by 12. And here is often where if I'm going to have fractions in a problem, they might come back to, to haunt me at the end. Um, we'll have to figure this one out. 71 into 12 is 1, 2, 3. It looks like it's going to be 5 times with 11 remainders. I'm doing this from past memory, and I don't want to forget the negative sign. So there's my negative 5 and 11 twelfths. Once again, though, many algebra teachers will be very happy if you just give them this improper fraction. It is simplified in that it doesn't have any common factors, so it's a reduced fraction. Reduced isn't really the word we should be using because reduced makes it sound like you're making it smaller. You're simplifying the fraction, uh, and in this case, there's no common factors. So you could argue that this is simplified, but again, if your teacher wants a mixed number, 12 goes into 71 five times with 11 remainders, so there's where you get your value. Now, this is the last piece. Just like we multiplied by a common denominator to get rid of fractions, I'm going to do the same idea over here, but I have to think of this in a slightly different way. 
These are decimals, of course, but this is a decimal to the hundredths place. This is a decimal to the one or the tenths place and tenths place here as well. The largest common denominator of 100, 10, and 10 would be 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 100, which sounds a little intimidating, but by multiplying by 100, all you really do is move the decimal. In the first one, you move the decimal two spaces and you get 25n. Um, here we go. In the second one, you move the decimal two spaces and you get 10n. And over here, you move the decimal two spaces and you get 980 by itself. Now, once again, you'll notice that now we have no decimals to deal with. We're going to add 25n and 10n and get 35n is 980. I'm going to divide both sides by 35. Now, this one does need to be simplified some. At a minimum, you notice that they both have a 5 in common because they end in 5. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, I'm doing this kind of on the fly. Divide this by 5, divide this by 5. If I had a calculator, this might go a little faster. So I get 196 divided by 7. And once again, if your teacher wants a mixed number, you're going to have to do the division. And what I noticed when I did this, I'm glad I did, because these two things, though I didn't immediately notice that they had this, they had a common factor of 7. So this answer, 196 over 7 or even 980 over 35, wouldn't have actually been fully simplified until you hit the 28 mark. But either way, the algebra piece is multiply by either a common denominator or the greatest decimal place. In this case, it's hundredths, so I multiplied by 100. It gets rid of decimals, or on the fraction side, it gets rid of fractions. And then the rest of this is either arithmetic or some pretty basic algebra. So having said that, good luck solving the rest of the multi-step equations.